The bilateral relationship between Nigeria and the United States of America remains unwavering and intact. Nigeria is Africa's most populous country and the United States' second largest trade partner and third largest destination for U.S. foreign direct investment in Africa and routinely ranks among the top recipients of American aid globally. By virtue of the country's size and influence, it is the largest African diaspora group in the United States. Notwithstanding, many American policy and aid objectives in Africa arguably are linked to a significant extent to developments in Nigeria. Security, governance, and human rights concerns in Nigeria have drawn congressional attention and posed challenges for U.S. engagement. However, President Tinubu has impressed investors and rating agencies with a series of far-reaching economic reforms. The public discontent has mounted over rising costs and declining purchasing power and prospects for its economic agenda remain uncertain. Joining us now on The Morning Show as we look at the depth and breadth of the U.S.-Nigeria bilateral relationship in the six-month mark of President Tinubu's administration is David Green, U.S. Embassy Chargid Affair in Nigeria. Good morning, Mr. Green, and thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. well, quickly. Let me ask you, one, what are the highlights of U.S.-Nigeria bilateral relations? And then increasingly, we've seen other countries moving into this African space, not just the Nigerian space. Today, you have U.S.-France summit, U.S., and um, rather, uh, France-Africa summit, mm -hmm. uh, Saudi-Africa summit, uh, Japan-Africa summit, you know, does that both are the United States and also with, for example, Nigeria, reaching out to the Middle East, to parts of Europe, to Asia. And yet, you know, America looks like a major ally of Nigeria. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, well, first of all, let me just um, hearken back to what happened uh, a little bit less than a year ago at the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit in Washington, D.C., when President Biden uh, committed to uh, deepening uh, our engagement with the continent of Africa in just about every sector you can imagine, but with a special focus on areas like trade and investment, um, uh, health and human security, food security, uh, making sure that African voices are elevated in global conversations. So uh, in the Nigerian context, of course, as you, as you mentioned in your, in your run-up, um, uh, as, as has been said, uh, you know, as President Biden said at that summit, uh, Africa's success is the world's success. And as he has subsequently said, Nigeria's success is the world's success. Because as Africa's largest population, democracy, and economy, uh, what happens in Nigeria is going to have impacts for the region, uh, for the continent, and well beyond. So we're very proud of our very productive partnership with Nigeria. And we do so much in every sector. Um, today being World AIDS Day, uh, let me mention for a moment what we've done over the years on HIV AIDS, for example. Um, in the two decades since PEPFAR has been around, we've invested uh, $8 billion in Nigeria, which has led to a point where we're on the verge of uh, epidemic control. We're going to meet UN targets for HIV AIDS uh, control uh, by 2025. We've got 1.6 million Nigerians on life-saving uh, drugs. So that's just one aspect of how productive this partnership is. And when we look at, uh, of course, uh, we believe firmly uh, that uh, you know, sort of international ties and close relations between all uh, international all countries are really vital for growth, for development, people and people exchanges. That's where the United States and Nigeria uh, really excel. So uh, the fact that Nigeria is building its ties around the world, it just makes sense. Uh, it's good for Nigeria. It's good for Africa. It's good for the world that there be more trade, uh, more interaction, uh, and an elevated African presence uh, in global institutions. All right. So let's let's talk about you know the views as regards to economic ties and you know some of the things President Tinubu has been doing. Well, uh, we're uh, you know certainly supportive of what the what the president uh, what President Tinubu has been trying to do in terms of putting Nigeria on a stronger economic footing. Um, 
We had, for example, our uh, Deputy Treasury Secretary, Wally Adeyemo, uh, was in Nigeria a couple of months ago, and he uh, engaged on uh, these economic issues, and he pointed out that you know, Niger Nigeria's uh, potential, it's not its oil, it's its people. And so it's, about, it's a question about how do you mobilize uh, the kind of investment, the kind of trade to create the jobs, provide the opportunity so that Nigerian citizens can uh, meet their aspirations and, and flourish. And that's something that we believe very strongly. If you have the right macroeconomic framework in place, uh, you have good fiscal management, and uh, you make a strong commitment to tackling corruption, these are the kinds of things that can unleash the Nigerian economy, uh, draw the kind of investment that's going to create jobs, and that's going to lead to economic growth and prosperity for all Nigerians, and it's going to have impacts well beyond uh, just Nigeria. By the way, you mentioned uh, Wale Adeyemo. You know, Nigerians were very excited when you visited, <laughs> considering the fact that Adeyemo is a Nigerian name, and it's uh, considered to be one of us if we are in Nigeria. If, that linkage. If I may say, uh, one of the areas that uh, we committed to, doing, uh, to working on at the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit was uh, more engagement with the diaspora. And so, of course, Wally Adiemo, he represents, you know, the, the, the full flourishing of an extraordinary human being uh, who has, uh, brings Nigeria and, uh, and the United States together in his person. Um, and the uh, administration recently announced the establishment of our um, uh, advisory council of, of diaspora members, of whom I think there are two members of Nigerian origin. So we're really working hard to try and make sure that we are engaging. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the 500,000 person strong Nigerian uh, diaspora in the United States. We're really doing everything we can to make sure that uh, we're working with the, with the Nigerian and the African diaspora uh, for the better benefit of the continent and, and the United States. But let's talk about tech. Mm. Many U.S. tech giants come into Nigeria, Microsoft, Google, yeah. Cisco. Uh, what role do you think that technology can play in strengthening uh, Nigeria-U.S. bilateral relations? Well, it's, it's already playing a remarkable role. And as you said, we've got uh, you know, U.S. tech giants investing here because they see the opportunity, they see the talent uh, that's present in Nigeria. Uh, and they're also a catalyst for an incredible amount of investment. I think I saw a statistic that 25% of all the venture capital coming into the continent comes to Nigeria. And that speaks to the potential that that sector offers for uh, the kind of productive trade and investment and job creation. I think it's also worth pointing out that those U.S. tech giants are also uh, training. They're training uh, young Nigerians, uh, women, to uh, find uh, good jobs in the tech sector. So it's having these knock-on effects. Um, so I think that um, another statistic that we like to cite is that uh, the oil and gas sector these days pr produces about 7% of Nigeria's GDP. The tech sector is about 18%. So when you think about the potential impact that tech, fintech, telecoms are going to have uh, on Nigeria's future growth and the course of development of this country and the provision of jobs uh, for its uh, citizens, it's going to be immense and the United States is very excited to partner in that space. So let's also talk about collaborations as regards one climate change cup mm. that's going on currently as we speak, and also the agricultural sector, because we need to be able to you know, double agricultural productivity in the, in the country. We have so much potential, but we're kicking way below our belt. Yeah. Well, uh, looking at what we're doing in the partnership, a uh, couple of examples, USAID has put more than $200 million in the last five years into the ag sector to try and create opportunities for farmers, to bring markets uh, to farmers, to uh, improve productivity through technology and through availability of resources. And in fact, I was present at the launch of a $22 million five-year program that's intended to help the cocoa uh, sector uh, and the entire value chain improve productivity. And you know, uh, pe folks may not know, cocoa is the second highest export earner for Nigeria when it comes to foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. So it's a hugely important sector. So we're, we're investing in that regard. And I think there's obviously tremendous potential, potential in the agricultural sector. And of course, food security is a focus that's on everybody's mind. So we're doing a lot in that space. Uh, and we've devoted uh, uh, about $17 billion globally to uh, food security resources over the last couple of years around the world. So a sector that we also take very seriously. COP28, of course, Nigeria is both uh, a leading energy producer, of course, and a country that is so uh, tremendously impacted by the cli climate crisis that we're going through right now. So that's another area in which we have uh, a whole panoply of programs that we're working on with Nigerians to try and uh, mitigate the impact of climate change, to try and help 
Nigeria make uh, the transition to cleaner power? And then, of course, we're, uh, of course, uh, having a lot of engagements. Uh, at what are some of those programs? I'm sorry? What are some of those programs? Well, we have po Power Africa okay. is our flagship program. And I think the figure that we use there is that over the years, we put $90 million into Nigeria to try and help with that transition, to try and uh, connect more uh, households to the, to the grid or to bring them power. But it's really not about the U.S. government assistance in this area. It's about mobilizing the private sector. Ultimately, uh, you uh, and, and I think uh, in that area, people see the opportunities in Nigeria because there's a, an incredible demand for power, and we want to help Nigeria supply that power and supply it in a clean manner. And I think the investment will come when the circumstances are propitious. Okay, you mentioned COP28. Yeah. Although that's not a question I want to ask. <laughs> I was just surprised that the loss and damage fund that was agreed upon yesterday, mm. and uh, you know the, the details being worked out now, uh, that the U.S. is just uh, contributing, has made a pledge of $17 million, mm. when Germany is promising $100 million, UAE is promising uh, $100 million. But the question I wanted to ask you, is about security, mm. which is a major concern for Nigerians. Uh, banditry, kidnapping, you know, terrorism, uh, if you could take us through, you know, what the U.S. and Nigeria are doing together at the bilateral level in the era of security cooperation. Sure. Uh, let me just mention on the first point, uh, our special presidential envoy um, uh, for climate, Kerry, uh, John Kerry, has said that we know that the United States bears a special responsibility and we're doing a lot on climate. We're going to mobilize a lot of uh, funds, investment funds, uh, climate finance to try and help the, the world overcome the challenges we face. On security, of course, uh, you know, everywhere I've, I've worked in my career, you know, security is the top thing. You know, the citizens need to feel secure. Um, businesses need to feel secure that they're going to be able to uh, succeed. And so the United States and Nigeria have a very deep partnership in that area as well. It, we, for example, we provide resources and assistance to help train the uh, Nigerian military on how to provide better maritime security or how to deal with uh, uh, car bombs and you know, impro improvised explosive devices. Of course, the, the Nigerian military is using very effectively the A-29 Super Tucanos that Nigeria bought a, a few years ago to uh, deal you know, uh, with the bandits, oh, well, sorry, with the terrorists, Boko Haram, ISIS, West Africa. So that's one aspect of it. But there's also the civilian security side, right? It's not just about the military. So we work very closely with the police, with uh, all the different uh, Nigerian civilian security institutions and agencies to help en enhance their capacity to uh, interdict illegal drugs, to um, uh, ensure accountability and human rights protections uh, in, in the various uh, security forces. And uh, that's an area of, uh, that's immensely important to us, immensely important to Nigeria, and something that we work on very closely together. Let's talk about the creative sector. Nigeria has a very big creative sector, mm. uh, one of the biggest film industries in the world, uh, music, arts, there's a resurgence of Afrobeat, yeah. you know, it's pop culture now. You see Nigeria, about five Nigerian stars nominated for the Grammy Awards in America. And you can see them doing so well. I mean, what is that connection like? And also, would also like to talk about in terms of you know infrastructure. So, so I want you to take on the creative sector and also fiscal infrastructure on ground. What has been the partnership like? We're gonna we're gonna get the whole Nigerian economy in this conversation. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, well, the, on the creative side, very exciting, of course, very exciting. Let me just harken back for a second to the Africa leader, U.S. Africa Leaders Summit because I was talking about you know sort of making sure that uh, African voices are are present and, and part of uh, global conversations and um, uh, you know in some ways that refers to the diplomatic conversation right we uh, advocated for uh, the African Union to have a seat at the uh, G20 meeting this year. Um, but uh, what's really remarkable is how Nigerians are telling Nigeria's story through uh, the creative sector. As you said, movies, film, it's both a tremendous opportunity for economic growth. We see Netflix, Amazon, they're investing, they're doing production here. Um, but as you said, the visibility of Afrobeats, the visibility of African artists is just skyrocketing globally and especially in the United States. And those kinds of people-to-people -people ties, that's really what this is about. It's about that connection. It's about feeling uh, that you are uh, having the kind of relationship with another country, with another people that's meaningful. And I think both as a source of economic uh, growth and as a way that brings our countries together, uh, the, the uh, incredible dynamism of the creative sector uh, in Nigeria is really, is really something. 
And it's also something we try and support through U.S. government programs. But again, that's the private sector that's really going to drive that, and it's about people's tastes, and it's about uh, cultural exchange. Um, infrastructure. Infrastructure, yes. Uh, another huge issue. Um, of course, it is widely known. I mean, Nigeria has an enormous infrastructure deficit, and uh, it needs to work on that. Globally, the United States, uh, we've launched something through the G7 that's called the Partnership for Global Infrastructure Investment. The goal is to try and mobilize about $600 billion or more uh, in infrastructure investment. And again, this is one of those sectors where governments can help you know, prime the pump. Uh, but we've got to drive uh, foreign investment. It's got to be private sector investment that's going to bring the, uh, deliver the infrastructure that Nigeria needs. And that gets back to, again, those fundamentals. You've got to create an enabling environment, a business environment of transparency, of um, accountability, of where uh, you know, you're uh, making sure that corruption isn't getting in the way of all business transactions. That's the kind of macroeconomic foundation, stability and predictability when it comes to foreign exchange, um, th those are the kinds of uh, steps that are going to build that foundation that are, uh, that's going to allow for investment and economic growth and achieving the infrastructure development. Well, let's talk about education. Mm -hmm. Many Nigerians studying in the United States mm -hmm. in various colleges at various levels. Only last year, one report stated that over 17,000 Nigerians gained admission into schools in the uh, U.S. And back home here, uh, when our brothers in the diaspora come home, they boast that uh, uh, Nigerians probably have the largest number of educated immigrants with PhDs mm. in the United States. So it's a major area of cooperation uh, between uh, the U.S. and Nigeria. But there's also this complaint that to get visa to go and study in the U.S. is a major issue. We would like to address that. I, I'm, I'm glad you asked because it is an important, and I know it's a concern for a lot of Nigerians. So yes, uh, uh, last year, 17, over 17,000 Nigerians went to the United States to study. That makes Nigeria the uh, seventh largest sending country uh, in the world and the number one on the continent. So that's something, again, that speaks to the strength of our bilateral relationship. Uh, what a lot of folks don't know is that uh, you know, this year, for example, uh, we've interviewed over 30,000 uh, student applicants. Uh, and over 115,000 tourist visa applicants. So there's a fundamental problem, a challenge here, which is it's, it's math. Uh, the demand for visa appointments exceeds uh, the supply that we could possibly uh, offer. But we've worked very, very hard to get the backlog down. It's much reduced. If you're a student seeking a visa to the United States for the first time, uh, you're probably not going to have to wait more than a month. Uh, we put a lot of measures in place to try and expedite appointments for those that truly need them. And uh, one major change that we made back in March was we extended uh, the validity of most Nigerian visas to five years from two. So in addition to that, bringing a lot of benefit for the individual who gets that visa, because they can come and go for five years, um, it will reduce that wait time because fewer people will have to renew. Instead of renewing every two years, you renew every five. So from that vantage point, uh, we're really working hard to get those uh, uh, those wait times down. But I will, if I may speak to your audience for a moment, if you're planning on applying for a visa, do apply early, plan ahead. <laughs> How about the Dropbox system? What is it like now? Uh, well, uh, we're able pretty much to keep up with Dropbox, uh, you know, which is sort of what we call our um, interview waiver program. If you've had a, a visa that has been used uh, you know, correctly uh, and it's expired, I think we've extended the for a couple of years uh, at least, or at least one what year. What do you mean by used correctly? Underline used correctly. Ah, uh, well, if you haven't overstayed your visa, okay. you know, if you haven't used it to uh, conduct uh, uh, affairs in the United States that are not under the, the grounds of what that visa was issued on, so there, you know, there are different criteria, um, then you can, uh, in many circumstances, renew your visa without having to come in for an interview. So that's another channel that we use to try and reduce the backlog and return, uh, well, get visas to people that, that uh, you know, uh, are qualified for them. Okay. Well, you published an op-ed recently. Mm. Um, do you want to talk about the issues in that uh, opinion piece? Uh, well, I, uh, I was inspired to write that piece by the uh, approach of the, uh, the one-year anniversary of the U.S.-Africa Leaders uh, Summit and the six-month anniversary of the Tinubu administration being in power to talk about all the different areas in which we cooperate and the optimism and the energy that I, we as uh, Americans working here and as Americans uh, representing uh, uh, U.S. interests in Nigeria, uh, the optimism and the, the, the positive energy that we see uh, for uh, this relationship going forward. 
all the different areas in which we cooperate, whether it's uh, health and human security, whether it's uh, physical security, whether it's economic growth, power, agriculture, all these topics that we've discussed this morning. Uh, we are uh, very enthusiastic about it. And uh, you know, we understand that a lot of Nigerians are, are hurting right now because the economic dislocation is very real and, uh, some pe and people are struggling. Uh, but it, it, the measures that the Tinubu administration has been taking uh, to try and put the economy on the right footing, to try and uh, increase the transparency and increase the, uh, uh, the predictability of the business environment are really important. And we are going to do everything we can to support the success of those policies. Uh, last point I'll, I'll, I'll make is that you know, we also uh, think that the, you, you can't, we've talked a lot about economics, but you can't overlook the governance aspect of it. Countering corruption, weeding out corruption, uh, ensuring um, um, better transparency and accountability in, in government and in security forces, um, ensuring that um, the electoral process has integrity. These are all areas that are uh, very, very important to secure Nigeria's future and let it play the role that it needs to play uh, for the benefit of its citizens, for the region, and for the continent and well beyond. Still on, you know, Ensuring integrity in the electoral process. Uh, the U.S. government has always sounded off as regards the electoral process, and at some point, some key political actors, you know, have been, you know, shown some very hard decisions by the U.S. as regards their visa. What would you like to see about that? Well, we have announced uh, a couple of times this year. Well, let me let me start from basic principles, right? Uh, as two great federal republics, uh, you know, the United States and Nigeria have a lot in common, and one of those is that we. Um, uh, you know, really prize this ele the electoral process and the democratic uh, processes that allow for uh, citizens peaceful transfer of power, uh, transfer, peaceful transfer of power for citizens to choose their leaders. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's it's essential. Um, and when we uh, have uh, uh, credible information that uh, somebody has uh, undermined the democratic process, whether it's you know ballot box stuffing or intimidating voters or intimidating journalists. Uh, we're going to take action, and as we've announced a couple of times, uh, we have imposed uh, travel sanctions, travel bans uh, on visa restrictions on individuals that uh, we have concluded have undermined the democracy. How can you process. broaden the reporting channels so that people are able to report more of this ballot box stuffing that you guys might not be able to catch a glimpse of? Because mm -hmm. that's really important. Because, I mean, suffice to say, the last elections were, were, were really very curious cases, you know, mm -hmm. across the state of the. the elections that happen in this, by elections as well. How, how do people have more reporting channels? Well, uh, we, as we do in, in every field, we work very, very closely with uh, Nigerian civil society organizations. And uh, during the elections uh, back in the spring, uh, you know, I went and visited a lot of the observatories and monitoring centers. And the young Nigerians are out there, uh, the political party observers are out there, and they are doing the work of citizens in a democracy, which is trying to hold their government accountable. And so at, at the end of the day, it's not about what the United States is doing with you know, visa bans. It's about how are the Nigerian citizens holding the government accountable and how are uh, Nigerian leaders, elected uh, leaders and, and community leaders, how are they demanding accountability from themselves and from others? Well, thank you very much, uh, David Green, uh, Chartered Affair of the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria. Thank you very much for joining us on The Morning Show.